The purpose of these lessons is to show you the logic behind the most basic Chinese characters, beginning with the simplest pictograms, and later combining these elements to create more complex characters. This lesson contains only two characters, one rare one, and one very common and useful one. But first, we need to review three earlier characters from lesson 14 in order to properly explain the new ones. The first review character is Bao, which consists of a person with a noticeably overstretched abdomen and a fetus developing inside. Meaning to contain within, with extended connotations of swelling, bump, bundle, or package. As a verb, it means to wrap or include. The second review character, pronounced third tone E, emphasizes that the gestation period is incomplete and the fetus continues to develop within the mother's body. To express this idea, the fetus is drawn upside down and the person radical is added. This character means to use, take, or the expression by means of, since the baby must come into this world by means of another person, its mother's womb. The third review character is another E, which depicts the final hours of the mother's pregnancy with a fully developed fetus about to be born. It originally meant the end of gestation, therefore becoming a verb to stop, to end, or an adverb literally already. Notice that the mother's body is no longer the focal point and does not appear at all. So, Bao is the fetus inside the womb, E is mid-pregnancy, and a different E is the termination of pregnancy or just after birth. Today's first character removes the mother from the picture entirely, depicting only the newborn baby. The legs and arms are not shown, possibly because it's swaddled in cloth. This rare character is pronounced fourth tone, si, si, and is used almost exclusively to indicate the time of day or year. When referring to the time of day, si, shi, it stands for the period between 9 and 11 a.m. Si becomes much more useful when added to zo that we saw in the previous two lessons, 80 and 81. This new combination of a newborn baby with zo is pronounced third tone qi. It's so important that I've devoted this entire lesson to it. What does qi mean? According to etymologists, the newborn baby element is not only the phonetic, but also contributes to the meaning, indicating a sitting person, or a person lying down, that original baby, getting up to walk. In other words, rising from sleep, or rising from a sitting position. Any sort of upward movement, actually, as you will see from the sentences. As usual, I'll start with concrete examples. Dong qi zi, an electric screwdriver. Qi zi can also refer to a bottle cap opener, and in some dialects it can refer to yeast, which literally makes bread rise. A crane or a hoist, qi zhong ji, is literally a raise heavy machine. 使用起重机,才挪得动大涡轮机. The large turbines can only be moved with a crane. When a ship raises or weighs anchor, qi mao, it's setting sail for its next destination. 我们明天就起锚驶向大连. We're raising anchor and sailing for 大连 tomorrow. 
Dalian is China's most northern ice-free port on the Yellow Sea. As I mentioned a few moments ago, Bao can refer to a lump or a bump. So, Qi Bao means to have a bump, literally to swell into a bump. Somebody knocked him on the head. He's got a huge bump. In English, when we lift our eyes, is to look at something. Mandarin, qi yan, is similar in that something has drawn your eyes to it, usually because it's attractive, whether talking about a person or a thing. Shi tang bu qi yan. Ke shi. Chi de ren han duo. The cafe was not much to look at, but had plenty of customers. The millionaire drives a very ordinary car. What does the prince see in such a plain-looking woman? We saw that the character for grass, Cao, can describe cursive and sometimes illegible writing. Cao zi, and careless or hasty work. Cao cao liao shi. It's also used to refer to the draft of any document, a rough copy which may need correcting later. The phrase qi cao is the way to say draw up or draft a plan or document. Literally, come up with a hasty sketch. Ni jin tian bi xu qi cao yi fen. Today you must draw up a study plan. We've seen the expression zhe jia can ting, so we know jia can refer to a family business, and then to any business. Qi jia, then, means to build up a name or fortune for oneself through a business or any other means. Bai shou qi jia is an idiom meaning to Start from scratch, build up from nothing. Bai shou qi jia de ren bi bi jie shi. People who rose in life by their own efforts are easy to find. Qi huo means a fire breaks out. It can also refer to cooking meals at home, which many people no longer have the time to do. From the original idea of firing up. The kitchen stove. This can naturally be extended to a person losing their temper. That person literally catching fire. Qichu Gongchang, zhotian qi huo le. The car factory caught fire yesterday. Ni bie qi huo, qing ting wo ba hua shuo wan. Don't lose your temper. Please hear me out first. If Qi means to stand up to walk, and dian, a spot. Qi dian is obviously a reference to the place where one sets out on a trip of some sort, a starting point. It looks like we're right back to where we started. Our next topic is a good place to begin. In was originally a woven mat for sleeping on, something literally underlying and supporting one's body when asleep. From there, it became the underlying cause of anything. Qi combines with in, qi in, to indicate the origin or cause of something. Huo zai de qi in bu ming. The fire is of suspicious origin. Shui zai shi ting dian de zhu yao qi in. The flood was the main cause of the blackout. Jia shi yuan tai da yi le shi chu shi de qi in. The driver's inattention was the cause of the accident. Dao jin tian wei zhi, wu ren zhi dao. Xing Qu Xiang de Qi Yin. Even today, 
no one knows the cause of sexual orientation. 作用 refers to an action, effect, or motive. When coupled with 起, 起作用, it means to have an effect. 众多的因素在起作用, numerous factors are at play here. 很明显, 他的话在起作用了, his words are obviously having an effect. 爸爸跟女儿讲的话好像起了作用. Her father's words seem to have worked. Aside from stories in religious texts, people usually don't rise from the dead. But 起死回生 means precisely that. However, it can be used figuratively when referring to restoring a dying business to prosperity. 金子再多也无法使人起死回生 No amount of gold can bring back the dead. 你认为我能使生意起死回生吗? Do you think I can revive this business? Since 起 means to rise to one's feet, 一起 is one way to express English together. Literally, all rise as one. Notice that zaiichi is a possible equivalent, but not always. When zai is added, the closeness or intimacy of the group is emphasized. Two people simply appearing side by side does not necessarily imply any sort of intimacy. Tamalyanga zaiichi. They're together. This may mean two people as a group, such as father and son, or a romantic couple. Xiaoban Ho, woman Ichi Hui Jia, will go home together after work. Nin Kofo Shang Guang, good woman Ichi Yong Zai. Would you do us the honor of dining with us? Gun Ta Zou Zai Ichi the Nu Sheng. 是他什么人? Who is that woman walking with him? 他天天跟死党在一起玩. She hangs out with her friends every single day. 他很内向, 不易跟别人在一起闲聊. He's very shy and doesn't easily chat with people. The two character phrase 起来, used alone, in English means to get up from a lying or sitting position. 起来 appears with many verbs to convey the idea of raising up someone or something. Notice that the addition of 来, meaning to approach the speaker, is a reference to a desired position or expected outcome of the action in question. 你们明天早上要几点起来? What time do you want to get up tomorrow morning? 我们把妈妈扶起来. We helped mom stand up. 他坐了起来, 用好奇的眼光看着我. He sat up and looked at me with curiosity. 把猫关起来, 我们要出去了. Put the cat in her cage. We're about to leave. In English, we can also say to lock up, which is similar. 他背起了背包就出门了. He took up his backpack and headed out. From the idea of rising up, 起来 has a more metaphorical usage, meaning to begin an action. To rise to action. 他看起来一点都不像诗人. He doesn't look at all like a poet. This would approximate the English expression to look like. Literally, what rises to one's eyes. A first impression. 这些日本日常食品看起来赏心悦目. These everyday Japanese food items are so pleasing to look at. 
这个婴儿的耳朵跟眼睛看起来都很正常。This baby's ears and eyes appear to be perfectly normal. If 看起来 means to look like, then it follows that 听起来 would mean to sound like. 这个话听起来没有那么土气。This way of saying it sounds less crude and unrefined. In a similar vein, 闻起来 translates as to smell like, literally, when it rises to our nostrils. 你在煮什么？闻起来像羊肉。What are you cooking? It smells like lamb. And 吃起来 is one's first impression when eating something, so it means to taste black. 你说的是牛肉吗？吃起来不太像。Did you say this is beef? It doesn't taste like it. Many other verbs can add 起来 to emphasize the beginning of an action, with various English translations. 回想起来，当时是很可怕的事件。When I look back on it, it was a dreadful incident. Notice that 来 can sometimes come after the object, as in this example. 我想起一个主意来。I've come up with an idea. 那件事情说起来，多么奇特。When you get into it, that incident is very peculiar. 不要为了一点小事就吵起来。Don't start arguing over such trifles. The addition of 来 is not necessary, as in these next four examples. 你这个动作。使我想起你的爸爸。That gesture of yours reminds me of your dad. 这件事不知从何说起。As for this incident, I really don't know where to begin. 说起白手起家的人，他是活生生的例子。Speaking of self-made people. He's a real live example. 我常常听人说起过你。I've often heard people mention you. Now we have verbal compounds with 得、不 and 了 expressing the possibility or impossibility of completing an action. For more information on these forms, refer to lesson thirty-five. Which is devoted entirely to this topic. Here's a short refresher sentence. 这几首诗，你背起来了没有 ？Have you memorized these poems yet? 背得起来 would indicate the poems can be committed to memory with enough effort. 背不起来 would mean the poems cannot be memorized for whatever reason. Difficulty of the material, not enough time, or simply laziness on the part of the individual. 背起来了 however, tells us that the attempt at memorization was not only possible but successful. 木头都湿了，想生火也着不起来。The wood is all wet and won't ignite if you try to light it. Literally, the flame cannot rise. 他想不起来在哪个电影里听过这个话。He can't recall in which movie he heard that line. Literally, the memory will not rise to consciousness. We saw earlier that 起眼 and 不起眼 means raising one's eyes to take notice of something. The following sentence illustrate 看得起 Which is to think highly of someone, have a good opinion of them, while kambuchi is to scorn or look down one's nose at them. These phrases are similar to English, look up to a person in admiration, and its polar opposite to 
look down on them with scorn. Note that these sentences never add lie. 他看得起你，才指派你去的。He thinks very highly of you to send you. 你的家人为什么看不起我 ？Why does your family look down on me? 了不起 is a sort of set phrase used as an adjective, meaning amazing, extraordinary, terrific, or awesome. Lie is never used with it. 这真是了不起的成就呢。That's truly an amazing achievement. 你的构想真了不起，我都没有想到。Your plan is extraordinary. I never thought of that. 这没有什么了不起。That's nothing to write home about. It's no big deal. These next four sentences still carry the connotation of beginning and action, but the addition of de or bu implies the possibility or impossibility of success. Lie is never added. These four examples are usually translated by the English word to afford, either monetarily or otherwise. 她当然吃得起一流的餐厅。Of course, she can afford to eat in first-class restaurants. In other words, she can rise to the income level necessary to eat there. This dress, long sleeve dress, I can't buy. I can't afford to buy this wool overcoat. Those hand-me-down fans, you are not afraid. You really don't want to risk offending those mafia members. Literally, you cannot afford to offend them and bear the consequences. 聚会时，别想请明星来亮相，你请不起。Forget about inviting a celebrity to show up at the meeting. You can't afford it. In other words, celebrity appearances don't come cheap. When used with time expressions, "qi" simply means to begin from that time forward, whether it be a day, date, month, or year. From that day, he and his friend crossed paths. Since that day, he has distanced himself from his gambling cronies. From today on, my house. 就是你的家。From today onward, my home is your home. And finally, "qi" is the measure word for incidents or accidents. 两起森林野火 two forest wildfires. 这起意外事件 this accident. Here is our color chart with today's two characters. Qi and si. Here's a recap from today's lesson. One, there are only two characters in this lesson, qi and si. Si appears in qi as the phonetic. Si. Is rarely used except in the ancient system of recording hours and years, called the twelve terrestrial branches. Two, qi, on the other hand, is found everywhere in the modern language. It's a combination of zhou and si, zhou meaning to walk at a fast pace, and si, meaning a newborn child. Together, qi. Is interpreted as a baby rising to its feet to walk, with the extended connotation of beginning an action or the start of a time period. Three, today's example sentences were arranged in a progression from concrete to abstract. To raise using outside force, as in raise anchor, qi mao. To build a business. Qi jia, to rise of its own accord, 
as in have a bump, 起包 to catch fire, 起火 to rise as a group together, 一起 to rise to one's feet, 起来 to raise up on one's shoulders, 背起来 to lock up, 关起来 to begin, such as start fighting, 打起来 To look like, 看起来 To recall, 回想起来 To begin from today, 从今天起 To have an ability, such as the ability to memorize, 背得起来 Unable to ignite a flame, 着不起来 To think highly of a person, 看得起 To look down on someone, 看不起 To be able to afford, 吃得起 To be unable to afford, 买不起 Now you will find a short quiz on double, triple character, and longer expressions. Answer using only the characters learned so far. Thank you for watching and listening.